Yeah, so like, um, with, with, the, with the current conflict in the, the Northern Kerbal Sea, what, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, how, how do you think the nations and the people are going to react to that? Yeah, I, uh, I think that the um, Soviet state of Kerbin is going to start a war with the United Kerbal States. And it's not going to be great for the citizens of the globe. <laughs> and, and, and it's a really tragic... <laughs> Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. The world is on the brink of war, and we need better military assets to keep us safe from our enemies. So, I set up a tournament in which five of my fighter designs and three real-world fighter replicas compete to see who's the best one. Now then, let's meet our contenders. But first, could you do me a huge favor by liking and subscribing? It's totally free, you can change your mind at any time, and it would really, really help me out. Anyways, back to the tournament and our contestants. The Mark I fighter, codenamed Python, is a dual-engine swept-wing snub fighter with the defining feature being a X-style stabilizer wing set seen here. Unfortunately, it has a couple faults. Because the wing structure in canards, it tends to stall out fairly easily mid-dogfight, and even worse, it tends to have single engine failure if it turns too fast. The Mark II fighter, codenamed Salamander, is a tri-engine flat-wing interceptor. I fixed most of the problems with the Python, and the result is an aircraft whose only real limiting factor is its takeoff speed and maneuverability. It can, unlike its predecessor, perform post-stall maneuvers effectively and is surprisingly good despite its ugly shape. The Mark III fighter, codenamed Cobra, is a dual-engine swept-wing snub fighter mark, much like the Mark I. This fighter has the highest kill count of the currently mentioned fighters and is the most maneuverable so far. It's also undergone the most testing in general, and this aircraft has the ability to do post-stall maneuvers very, very effectively given a very high thrust-to-weight ratio. The Mark IV fighter, codenamed Copperhead, is my first and only attempt at a stealth fighter. It's bad. Really, really bad. Its radar cross-section is larger than the Mark III's, and it's not even particularly small. Combine this with its lackluster maneuverability, and not exactly great radar placement, it's just not good. The Mark V fighter, codenamed the King Cobra, is a single-engine fighter with some surprisingly impressive performance. It isn't capable of doing effective post stall maneuvers or gaining speed or altitude quickly, but with the smallest radar cross section so far and a good amount of countermeasures, it works well. The F-16 is the first in-game replica. It's a single-engine swept-wing air superiority fighter originally produced by the United States. It's my dad's favorite fighter plane, so I'm hoping it doesn't get bodied immediately. The F-14 is a classic American air superiority fighter designed to be launched off of carriers for the US Navy. It's my favorite fighter of all time, and it's just really, really cool. The Su-27 is a Soviet-era twin-engine super maneuverable air superiority fighter. It is the rival of the F-15 and is still in service in several air forces to this day. All of that out of the way, let's get into the tournament. Here you can see the current bracket. In between rounds, you'll be able to see the brackets for who won the previous round and who will be facing each other in the next one. Now, round one was a very interesting one. The F-16 ended up coming out on top of the Mark I fighter in a landslide, making an impressive 3-0 score out of the gate. In the next fight, the Mark III defeated the Mark IV, which is to be expected, but the Mark IV did better than I thought. There were some self-caused uh, casualties, and if it weren't for those, it may have won, if not barely. The score came out with a 3-2 split in favor of the Mark III. The Mark II came out swinging against the Mark V with an early victory, and the score ended up being a 3-2 in favor of the Mark II. For the last fight in round one, we have the F-14 versus the Su-27. It was not even close. 3-0 in favor of the F-14. Round 2 was very, very predictable, unfortunately. Both fights were 3-0 in favor of the winners, completely skunking out the previous competition. The F-16 annihilated the Mark II and the Mark III completely wiped the F-14, which is a little bit tragic in my eyes. 
Round three was intense but decisive. Each point was hard fought. However, in the end, the F-16 beat out the Mark III. Three to nothing. I suppose that's it then. In Kerbal Space Program, the best fighter happens to be a Cold War era fighter from the real world. That's not very climactic and quite frankly just proves that the US military reigns supreme. Or does it? And so that really brings us to the whole point of this video. Uh, I've learned a lot about the, the fighter design thing, both from designing the Mark 1 through 5, from watching the fight, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, seeing what matters, seeing what doesn't. Like, great example, radar cross section. For this type of tournament, it doesn't matter at all. Not one bit. Now, other things like adding extra weight to your aircraft because you use liquid fuel tanks for the entire fuselage instead of the dedicated fuselage part, that costs you a lot of weight and that really, really hinders your fight. All that being said, I would like to introduce you to the Mark VI, codename Mighty Eagle, a quad-engine supersonic interceptor capable of going around 2.7 on way to a target. Unfortunately, it is a limited range aircraft, 60 kilometers one way, 30 kilometer round trip without drop tanks. With drop tanks, this is able to be extended a great, great deal. However, it is still the fastest and most dependable guard fighter in the current fleet. For the bonus round, we have the Mark VI versus the F-16. Previously, the F-16 was undefeated. However, in this bonus round, the F-16 lost with a 3-1 split in favor of the Mark VI that is officially the best fighter tested by the tournament. already launched and that is a third splash from the mark six all right all the piloting and shit out of the way thank you guys so much for watching the video to the very end i really really appreciate it um also i gotta say there were a lot of things that i learned that were genuinely useful and unique like for example what i've always done in construction of my craft is use the liquid fuel tanks as the fuselage portions because that way you can store fuel while also expanding the length of your craft. However, what I found is that if you use the actual fuselage portion, you know, the part that's designed to be a fuselage with no extra weight and all that stuff, you end up with a much more maneuverable fighter once the drop tanks are dropped and once it's just the actual meat and bones of the craft. Which I guess makes a lot of sense when I think about it but I'd never really thought about that or practiced that before. Uh, beyond that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Be sure to look out for the next video that will be coming hopefully soon-ish within the next month or so. That's kind of the target I'm aiming for is within a month of the release of my last video is when I'll release my next video. But at the same time, if it's a little longer than that, I don't really give a fuck because I'm gonna make the best video I can every single time. All that being said, thanks again again for watching the video, and I'll see you next time. I don't know why, but in this light, it looks like a post-jerk-off glow.